Welcome back to The Gun Collective. It's time for another Hashtag Not A Review, a video where I take a product and give you guys a hands-on spotlight. Today, we're taking a look at the new CMMG Mark IV that's chambered in 22 Nosler. I suppose we ought to start off by looking specifically at the ammo. 22 Nosler is a relatively new cartridge introduced in early 2017, and it's essentially a 5.56 on steroids. Able to sling a 77 grain bullet at about 2950 feet per second, whereas the 5.56 gets that same bullet out at about two to 300 feet per second less. The brass cases of the ammo are actually a little bit wider in the body than the 223 5.56 cases, so the gun actually ships with a 6.8 SPC magazine. It's kind of a shame because 6.8 mags in normal capacities retail for about 50 bucks. Although this isn't really the type of rifle that you would dump rounds out of at an average cost of about $1.10 per round. Whew. So the rifle, let's get into that. The receivers in this case are fairly standard. The stock is a Magpul MOE and the handguard is their own 14 inch key mod job. But then you get into the other parts that kind of bring the rifle into its own. This particular V2 version has a 24 inch medium taper fluted stainless barrel with a one in eight twist. And they topped it off with the Geisley SSA trigger. For the MSRP of $14.49, it's solid value in my opinion. The only thing I was left wanting was a threaded muzzle. This one doesn't come that way, and I wish it did. Now, how does it handle? How does it shoot, right? We took it out to the range, and I started out the day by stacking the first three rounds out of the gun. And I'm like, oh crap, this is awesome. I was just trying to get accustomed to things and get a good zero on the gun, and it was stacking rounds. I'm not a precision shooter by any means, but that had me feeling pretty good. As time went on and we got more rounds down range, I started to get more comfortable. The recoil impulse is no more than a 5.56 and even with the sub eight pound weight of the gun, it kind of remained pretty stable. I set it up with a Harris bipod mounted to a Daniel Defense key mod bipod adapter, mouthful, and then topped the gun off with a Nikon Monarch 4-16 optic. As the day went on, I started to notice the groups starting to open up and I was perplexed. Was I getting tired? Was something else changing? Can I just not shoot? <laughs> then we realized the answer was simple. The gun is super hot. We could see Mirage coming off of the thing. For those of you that are unaware, accuracy on some guns can really change when the gun gets hot. So we decided to pack it in that day and wait for a cooler day to see what really could be done. I got my wish about a week later with temperatures dropping from day one at about 80, 85 degrees to this day about 60. That had to mean better groups. The reality is that I was able to consistently get a few rounds to stack and an average of about one inch group at 100 yards. Not exactly stacking rounds all the time, but not awful either. Again, once the gun got hot, it started opening groups again. I had to think about this. Does this really matter? Well, in my head, not as much as you might think. This isn't a battle rifle. It's a long range target gun and a hunting rifle. Are you ever going to be doing that kind of rapid shooting in the field? No, you're not. So to me, that heat related larger groups thing was a non-issue. When it was cool, it was shooting great. After we put some holes in paper for the second day, it was time to get out to the extended range, the 700 yard range. I wanted to see if the practical, usable accuracy was better than what I was seeing on paper. I started out at 200, bang, 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 hitting it all the time, that was too easy. Then three, and 400 yards, and then 500, and all the way out to 700 yards. That's when things got challenging. There's a good <laughs> I did a short Facebook video where I was able to ring steel at 700 yards four out of five there times with go. just a simple holdover. There's a hit. There's another hit. There's a hit. Hit, and one more, come on baby. That says to me that I can absolutely dial things in more on paper. I was really happy with that kind of performance. And it kind of leaves me wondering, where is this thing really gonna push its limits? I mean, it didn't feel like 700 yards was all that difficult. Maybe it's time to take it out to 1,000 and see what it can do. The whole time we're shooting this thing, we're trying a mix of 
55 grain varmint rounds and 77 grain match rounds both from Nosler, of course. I shot the 77 grain more consistently while my range helper, Alan, had better luck with the 55s. Interesting. I was actually talking with a friend of mine that's big into precision shooting and works at another company and kind of briefing him on the rifle because I was the first person that he knew that had rounds of 22 Nosler downrange. I told him about the groups starting to open up under heat and how the first three rounds out of the gun stacked. His answer to me, clean the bore. Duh, the gun is probably breaking in and just needs a good cleaning to kind of bring things back together. And you know what that conversation did for me, guys? That got me excited to go out and shoot this rifle again. That's the thing with this gun. It's easy to shoot accurately. There wasn't a bunch of faffing about with like gas settings or tuning different parts to make it shoot accurately for me. It was show up, load the mag, and start hitting targets. We're definitely gonna do some more follow-up testing with this gun in the future, as long as CMMG lets me hold on to the rifle. If you guys wanna see maybe some ballistics gel testing of 22 Nosler, or maybe more long-range shooting with this Mark IV, maybe out to 1,000, leave a comment down below and let me know. If you thought this video sucked, then give it the old thumbs down. But if you enjoyed it, hit that like button and share it around with your friends because that's a massive help. Be sure to check out the links down in the description to learn more about the gun and the cartridge. And as always, thank you all for watching. We'll see you soon.